Hi, this is Alex Paul with Open Systems Media and Embedded Computing Design, and I'm here at the Apex Show in Anaheim, California with my dear friend Alex Lido. Hey, it's good to be here. It's always good to be here. He's the CEO of EPC, if you haven't watched anything or lived under a rock, I think, because uh, everyone knows you in Wide Band Gap. Yeah, all right, well, that's good, that's good. <laughs> Well, and so we're here at the show, and the big thing I'm focusing on is there's been a lot of hype, there's been a lot of promise, and a lot of misinformation about Wide Band Gap. So I've been asking everybody, what is happening now? What are you sampling now? What are you offering to the marketplace that is available now? So, you know, in, in the last year at EPC, we did our first frontal attack on the MOSFET. And uh, we did that with our fifth generation product, which we designed very specifically to attack the 48 volt node. There's a lot of business at 48 volts. People are onboarding 48 volts onto their AI machines, their server boards, their uh, gaming systems. And uh, so we saw a lot of design windows opening up. We designed our products not just to be better in that socket, but also price them equal to the MOSFETs in those in those uh, applications. So we now have higher performance and lower cost and smaller size and what's not to like? What is not to like? And, well then again, we see some of that misinformation that unfortunately still exists in the industry. When will GAN be cheap enough, more perform enough, temperatures, and these, and it is all, I think it's from the growing pains, people mis you know, they misremember some of the early bumps that no longer exist. Yeah, you and I were talking a little earlier, that's probably the same conversation that occurred between germanium and silicon 60 years ago and between digital control and analog just a few years ago. You know, it's always the same thing, you know, people, some people just won't accept the new stuff. Now, speaking of new stuff, you have some nice demos here. Can you tell us a little bit about them? Yeah, so, you know, as people are, are going to these higher and higher density GPU-based AI systems, they're onboarding the 48 volts. They can no longer have connectors that will handle all the power at 12 volts that have to come from the rack. So instead of having 48 to 12 at the rack, they're going to 48 volts on board. Of course, that's very expensive real estates, and they need something very, very small, very efficient, and oh, by the way, they don't want to go down to 12. They want to go to much lower voltages now. So we developed a, a, an LLC converter. This is an example. This is a 900 watt converter. It's 98% efficient all the way down to six volts. And this kind of a design is really taking off in the new server board designs that we see all throughout Asia right now, and, and also in the US. Um, and then from this one, at very low voltage, they're going with a silicon-based point of load right into the GPU. And that overall system efficiency may be 90, 91%, which is pretty good compared to last generation. Pretty good. <laughs> now these guys still need a legacy 12 volt uh, power on their board for the IOs and things like that. So we designed a couple of uh, uh, chips that were very specifically for 10 amp and 25 amp legacy 48 to 12 systems. And these buck converters that you see here are the most efficient and the smallest that you can get, also the lowest cost. And uh, just to, to demonstrate that, this is uh, an example of the industry leader, the very best uh, 48 to 12, 18 amp uh, module that you can buy that is very, very uh, high volume right now. And um, our devices that I just showed you are more efficient, also smaller footprint and lower profile. So what's not to like? What's not to like? Well, and that's the thing is, I do believe greed or willingness to be as cheap as possible is going to help you guys in the long run because all of these talks about cost keep forgetting system cost keep forgetting all, the entire uh, chain, the, the gestalt of the design. It really is cost effective when you look at it from that point. Yeah, I found that, that the system design discussion is a complicated one that you have with engineers. And then the purchasing agents come in and they just throw all that stuff out and they say, how much is the part going to cost you? So when you price it at the same or lower price than a MOSFET, then you got the purchasing agent's attention and they're starting to pull on the engineers. You get those design windows for sure at that point. Very nice. Now, um, you wanted to show me something else. You want to go, uh, let's walk over there and I'd you show like it to me. To take you from the present to the future. And Not too far in the future. Remember I was saying, uh, you know, forward stuff. All These right. all exist, right? Yeah. All right, so we're alpha sampling right now a fully monolithic half bridge. There's an image of it up there if you can uh, get the camera on it. And this uh, includes, so it's, it's integrated the high and the low side transistors along with drivers and level shift. 80% of all power conversion is some form of a half bridge with driver and level shift. So why don't we just put them all together onto one chip? You can do that in GAN, can't do it in silicon, can't do it in silicon carbide. And I would say this redefines a power component. 
And, and I really believe that the future of power conversion is really logic in, power out. And, and that's what we need to focus on. And for, for going for the future in EPC, we're going to be adding more features, functions, different voltages, different power levels, but logic in, power out. These parts will be widely available sometime at the uh, end of summer. I'm going to hold you to that. I hope you do. <laughs> Thank you so much, Alex, for taking the time to talk it's to my me. My pleasure. As always. Thank you so much.